All right, so in the last video, we started talking about rectifiers. We started talking about how our AM signal, we know already we're going to say we've selected a proper A so that we have a good modulation index between 0 and 1. Uh, we have selected our omega C. We've selected a carrier frequency that's nice and large. It's much larger than the bandwidth of this message. We said we're going to build a rectifier, and that's going to somehow give us our message back. And what we've started with so far is we've started with a diode that introduces a switching operation. The switching operation is here. This uh, is the, the Fourier series for that switching operation. It has an infinite number of terms and was discussed in uh, the, the previous videos on DSBSC circuits. So we're going to introduce a bunch of switching. Uh, we're going to apply that to our message. So we're going to switch our message off and on with this WT, this infinite Fourier series, and we're going to come up with some voltage past this rectifier. All right, and we're going to see what, what that is. In the last video we ended, we had started stepping through this. We had been distributing our uh, amplitude modulated signal, uh, multiplying it by this W, the, the switching Fourier series. Okay, so we so far we've gotten a couple terms because we started multiplying it out. We see that this term has one cosine. This one has a cosine squared. This one has a cosine of one frequency and a cosine of another frequency, which you know maybe could be rewritten, but it's going to have some higher power cosines as well. Now, uh, let's let's combine those a bit. All right, so we've combined these two cosines here into just that cosine squared term, um, and this one, right? We have these two cosine waves. Now let's let's apply an identity that we've used in the past, this cosine squared identity, and let's put it in right for here. When we apply this identity and we put it in here, we can see now we're starting to get to the point where we can see this is going to introduce another DC term. And what I mean when I say DC term is we've introduced another term that does not have a cosine wave attached to it. This is good, right? Because we're trying to recover our message. This is how we recover the DSB SC messages too, is we somehow were able to get that um, message term that didn't have a, a, a cosine associated with it, and that was the base band signal. So by introducing this identity, we can see that this term here is likely going to yield us the message by itself, all by itself at the base band. So now let's distribute this. So we're going to distribute this term uh, and these ones, and when we do that, Right, we multiply it across, and sure enough, right, this is the term that we're going to be excited about because this ha is going to contain uh, the message by itself, not being multiplied by any cosine wave. And finally, right now we've separated these out, multiplied a bunch of them through, and rearranged so that they're in order. So I've moved this term uh, out to the front, so we have the lowest power, this one, there's no cosine waves being multiplied. This one is the second lowest. It's just one cosine at our carrier frequency. The third term, we've bumped all the way up to two times our carrier frequency. Uh, this fourth term, who knows how high these get, right? But this is going to be uh, at minimum uh, higher frequencies than, than what we were dealing with previously. So based on this, now we can see that uh, by adding that diode, switching our message off and on, putting it through there, we're going to get Whole bunch of terms of various uh, uh, carrier frequencies and if we were to uh, continue to separate this out right we can even change this we can even apply some identities here to see yes indeed right these this final term and indeed any terms beyond here right as n approaches infinity these are going to contain a very high carrier frequency multiples so at some point, right, these ones just continue to be higher and higher multiples of their carrier frequency, whereas the very beginning, right, this is the one we're most interested in because we can see our message by itself. So now breaking it all out, we can see we have baseband terms, we have terms at our carrier frequency, and then we have terms at various multiples of our carrier frequency. So that Fourier series from the switching, it introduces many, many higher terms all the way up to whatever your highest n is. n equals infinity, you get terms up that high. And if we were to look at this in the frequency domain, right, these amplitudes, you know, they might not be exactly correct, but, right, we are going to have in the frequency domain uh, some part with our baseband, and that's good, right, because that contains our message. Going higher, you get some terms 
at your carrier frequency even higher, two, two times your carrier frequency, uh, so on and so forth, just higher and higher terms uh, of, of your carrier frequency. Now, this is the one we want, though, right? This one is the one that contains our base band, and right, we're looking for demodulation. So just like we did in the past, well, we have a special tool, the low-pass filter. We can use it to get rid of all those higher frequency components. Now what we're left with is we're left with this VR, right? So this vo that voltage uh, past the diode is going to contain some DC offset. That's the A. That's due to the, the carrier wave we introduced. And then our baseband, which is what we want. Now, uh, in a graphical form, right, we are here. Our VR, right, this has all these carrier terms. We switched it off and on with the diode. We introduced a whole bunch of these new terms. They're really high frequencies. We're going to put them through the low pass filter and that's just that's going to get rid of all of those which is really good that's what we want so then when we get to this point here we've gone through a low pass filter all we have left is this vr we've uh, filtered out all these high frequency components they're all gone and we have dc offset and a baseband so if we put it through um, a capacitor Right, we're going to get this. We're going to be able to remove that uh, DC offset, which is good. We'll be left with our message, right? And we'll see, right? If you were able to remove that DC offset, you would have this one over pi a. Uh, this gets removed, and then you'd have plus one over pi times the message. So when it comes out of this rectifier, we have reduced the amplitude of the message. Uh, it's now one pi, so it's about one third of what the original message amplitude was. But uh, we were able to do that all with these really simple components, right? We were able to do it all with these rectifier components. And in, a, in, in some way, you can think of this as, the, as essentially the diode is introducing an equivalency to coherent modulation. So without ever putting in a coherent wave, right? We don't have anything going into this system that's a coherent wave by itself, right? We don't actually introduce that uh, a coherent wave by itself into the system, but because we had this extra high amplitude due to our carrier, we are able to use the, the diode itself to take this, this cosine here that's in our modulated message, force that switching in, and it's basically an equivalent to coherent modulation, but it's a lot cheaper because we didn't actually have to produce this coherent wave. So that's really good for us, makes the reception quite a bit less expensive.